totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. Of course, I would accept a clear election result, but I would also reserve my right to contest or file a legal challenge in the case of a questionable result. You know, it was horrifying what he said. We've had hot, contested elections going back to the very beginning, uh, but one of our hallmarks has always been that we accept the outcomes of our election. It was a line from the debate that got the most attention, the most coverage, definitely, in today's reaction from Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Let's bring in our panel here in New York. Daniel Harper of the New York Post. Lisa Booth, columnist with the Washington Examiner. Kaylin Huey Burns, national political reporter for Real Clear Politics. And William McGurn, Main Street columnist for the Wall Street Journal. Okay, Bill, uh, your thoughts. First on the statement, but then the reaction to it. And I mean, it was almost breathless. Yeah, look, it didn't, it didn't help them by making this because they, we all knew that they were going to jump. On. It was similar to his comment to you about uh, the Republican primary, but we have an editorial tonight about the uh, the reaction here, the smelling salts, you know, that people are calling for. It's sort of become an article of faith in the Democratic Party since 2000 that Bush stole the 2000 election and the 2004 election. So there's, you know, there's a lot of um, sort of faux outrage about this. I mean, Lisa, Hillary Clinton herself at different fundraisers after 2000 questioned um, the results of that election. Um, obviously, it's a different scenario that they're talking about, but it, it was interesting to see the reaction today. Well, I mean, there's hypocrisy there, but I actually think Donald Trump's missing the opportunity because the system is rigged, but not exactly the way that he's describing it. All he needs to do is point to the fact that we have a State Department official uh, allegedly uh, suggesting a quid pro quo with uh, with with uh, the FBI, the fact that we've got the Department of Justice colluding with the Clinton campaign, giving them inside information, the fact that we have the Attorney General, the nation's uh, top law enforcement, meeting with Bill Clinton during an ongoing investigation. But the biggest problem for Donald Trump with all of this is the fact that this represents his biggest obstacle this election cycle. It's the fact that he uh, derived the long, wrong lessons from the primary because he got two billions of two billion dollars of free uh, earned media from the primary, and now he's got no way because he never built a, an organized campaign infrastructure to get his message out. Clinton's beating him two times uh, the amount of money on uh, radio, TV, uh, and cable, and her allies are beating him three times as much. So he doesn't have an infrastructure to be able to get his message out, and he's not being able to break through the mainstream media and break through the noise. Okay, and that is the question, is, is could he have a debate performance that changed the dynamic? And I think the consensus is that while he performed pretty well as far as all the debates, uh, minus that one sentence that got a lot of attention, he likely didn't change the dynamic? I don't think he changed the dynamic, and I actually think he has the potential to hurt some of these down-ballot candidates now. I think the path for Donald Trump to the presidency is so narrow that uh, Republicans are hoping that at least he can close the gap a little bit, not necessarily win, but close it enough to kind of help lift some of these candidates down-ballot. And what he said uh, at the debate on the debate stage is really the campaign in a nutshell. He is presented time after time with dozens of opportunities to go after Hillary Clinton to make his case to the American people, and it's always one line, but a very significant line uh, that Democrats, I think, rightfully are going on this. Daniel, a lot of things happened in that debate. It was substantive for a lot of it. One of them was an answer by Hillary Clinton about the Clinton Foundation. Question and answer about that. Take a listen. Everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of... Uh, uh, our country's interests and our values. The State Department has said that. I think that's been proven. But I am happy. In fact, I am thrilled to talk about the Clinton Foundation because it is a world-renowned charity. And I am so proud of the work that it does. For Secretary kids, Clinton, respect, respectfully, this is, a, this is an open discussion. Well, it is an open discussion. I, I understand. And, and a specific you, question went to pay for play. Do you want to well, talk about that? Well, I think, look, but there is I think no that evidence. Been but there, well is, there, there is a lot of evidence it's been very about well the very good work and it's a and criminal the high enterprise. That and so many people know it. It's a criminal enterprise. Okay. Well, there you go. But. 
today, WikiLeaks in these emails suggests that there's much more uh, to this and, and to the money at Henry's report uh, tonight about what's inside these emails. Yeah, there's tons more, and obviously there's a big relationship between these people who got special treatment at the State Department and, it, and have also donated to the Clinton Foundation or paid for speeches to Bill Clinton. I think going back to Donald Trump and, and this, this whole statement about, um, I think the problem is, is he's coming across as a victim. And I think playing the victim card just isn't good enough. He needs to be a strong leader. He needs to be somebody who shows aspiration and that people can follow and say, this is the kind of life that I want to lead and he can lead you there. Playing the victim card for Donald Trump is exactly not the message that he shouldn't put forward. And I think that's really hurting him there. To Caitlin's point, Bill, is the down ballot really now the concern for Republicans? Well, I think it's, it's been a concern from the start. Um, I would say, look, Donald Trump, I, I agree with Caitlin, missed a lot of opportunities. I mean, the one that just screamed out to me is when Mrs. Clinton was talking about Vladimir Putin. I mean, who put all these secrets right out of the table like you're you know like putting a stake out there for a hungry dog for the Russians to hack into and he could have gone after that that said the press hasn't been that interested in Mrs. Clinton's uh, emails at all so I'm not sure even if he didn't make this comment about that they wouldn't have uh, latched on to something else maybe one of his comments about the, the women no one seems to be interested in Mrs. Clinton's emails it's sort of as though people have accepted what difference at this point does it make I think it's more so that this is very uncharted territory. Uh, the fact that you know we have hacked emails that the the U.S. intelligence officials have said have been hacked by Russians. Um, I think if the headline wasn't the idea that Donald Trump thinks the election is rigged, I think the other headline would have been that Donald Trump is dismissing the intelligence community and information coming from that. And I think that's where she made the strategic case of getting the attention away from her and the controversies involved in those emails. Right. Yeah. So obviously the. The substance inside is a different thing than, exactly. than what, but you know, I was expecting him actually when she said 17 intelligence agencies around the world say that the Russians are behind this, to him to right. say 17 intelligence agencies said there were Iraqi weapons of mass destruction and you voted for that war, but he didn't say that either. Okay. Well, no, but you know, and, and, and to Caitlin's point, that's the, the problem, and also to Bill's point as well, the, the media hasn't been interested in any of the information surrounding Hillary Clinton. Some look media. At the media Obviously, well, no, no, it. some of it, but if you look at the Media Research Center, so you You've got NBC, CBS, and NBC, I think as of a couple of days ago, had spent seven hours and 30 minutes dedicated to the woman coming forward and the very, various allegations regarding Donald Trump and women, uh, and only an hour plus to the WikiLeaks uh, information. So I think no matter what Donald Trump said yesterday, and yeah, he didn't take advantage of all the opportunities he should have, but no matter what, the headlines would be negative for him. And back to my original point, the problem for him is he never built the nuts and bolts of an actual presidential operation, so he can't cut through all right, the noise. So you're, can't saying cut through this you're saying it's over? You can't turn it around? I don't know if it's over, but I don't know how he gets his message out without having the money, without having the infrastructure built to break through this noise, to break through the mainstream media and get his and message so out. And so these polls, do you think that they're pretty accurate where, where they are? All the data definitely points to her leading and pretty significantly. He needs to change the, mom the men momentum. He needs to change the race. He didn't. He hasn't done that yet. And look, I, I think and when you talk to people who work for Trump, you get a sense that they're not so enthusiastic. And not enthusiastic about Trump. They certainly are about that. But that they themselves aren't convinced that he's going to win in November. And I think... I think people catch on to that, and these statements by Donald Trump about discrediting the election results already play to that point where he, it, this is not a man who believes he's going to win. We will see.